Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Slash687 here, back at it again with another PC build guide video. It's been a week, but I'm gonna keep making these things as long as I keep getting the great feedback I've been getting recently. I'd like to thank everybody who's subscribed as of late, and you know, it's a big honor to be back here making YouTube videos again, and uh, you know, getting close to the level of success I was having before my channel kinda went downhill, so I just want to thank you all before I get into today's video. So what I have today is a $500 PC build. $500 is still a little bit on the cheap side. If you moved up to like $700 or $800, you'd get a lot more performance for the money. But $500 is not that bad of a budget as far as a PC is concerned. And at $500, you're getting to the point where building a new PC might start to be a better option than just buying like a used PC and then putting a new graphics card in it, but I'd say anything under $500 you would definitely want to just do what I did a few videos ago, take an old PC and just try to revive it. But $500 is a pretty good budget, so let's start out right here. For the CPU, I have an AMD FX 6300. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this thing if you've ever watched any other PC build videos. It's a 6 core, 3.5 gigahertz CPU by AMD. It's a little bit old, a little bit dated nowadays. I think it's something like three or four years old, but this uh, CPU is still great as far as multi-core CPUs go. With six cores, you're gonna be able to play most of the latest games at max settings as long as you have a GPU to match, and the GPU I have in this build is not bad at all. And also, it's six cores as well as six threads. There's no hyper-threading or anything, but six cores is plenty for live streaming, gaming, and opening 1,000 web browsing tabs. So for the build, at only $106, the AMD FX 6300 is A-OK. -okay. Next up, to cool this thing, gets a little bit hot since it's one of these older FX 6300s, we have a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO. You've seen this thing a million times in every PC build video, but it's the old standby, it's still good. It is still very, very good for the money. At only $25, this thing will keep your CPU nice and cool, and you can feel free to overclock it fairly high, maybe get it up to four gigahertz if you really want to, and if you win the lottery as far as PC parts go. They all overclock differently depending on which individual chip it is. So, you know, if you get the right chip, you might get over four gigahertz. So that's why we're gonna go with some decent cooling on this thing in the Hyper 212 Evo will do just fine. Next up for the motherboard, this is what we're going to be putting all these wonderful parts on. It's a Gigabyte GA970A socket AM3 Plus motherboard. I think I had this thing in my last build, but it's still very good for the money. It's one of the top motherboards for the price right now as far as I'm concerned for the AM3 Plus socket. It supports 32 gigabytes max of memory, supports DDR3 speeds up to 2000 megahertz, has crossfire support. Uh, has RAID support, all kinds of good stuff, and you know, for the price, it's a uh, full-size ATX motherboard, and it's gonna do just fine for any parts or any upgrades you could possibly want in the future with this build. Next up, the RAM. I have Crucial Ballistic Sport 8 gigabytes set. It is 1600 megahertz, comes in two 4 gigabyte sticks, so you can take advantage of dual channel memory. Uh, it looks pretty plain, not a very fancy heat shield on this thing, but it gets the job done, does what RAM needs to do. You don't really need anything fancy as far as RAM's concerned, unless you're just going for like purely aesthetic reasons, but this set is perfect for the build. 8 gigabytes is fine for the parts that we're using, and if you want to upgrade it in the future, the motherboard will allow for that. So next up, what I have is the storage. It is the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 7200 RPM hard drive. You've seen this thing a million times, and it's still the best hard drive out there for the money. 1TB is pretty good nowadays. You might want to step it up to 2TB or 3TB if you have the money, because one terabyte of storage is starting to you know lose its value as games are getting bigger files are getting bigger that's just what happens over time you're gonna constantly need more storage so uh, for the money at $50 for one terabyte it's not bad but if you have the money I'd recommend two or three terabytes Next up, the most important part of a gaming build, we have the graphics card, which is an XFX Radeon R9 380 4GB edition. 
For only $170, this R9 380 is very, very good for the money. You're gonna get some 1080p gaming done at reasonable settings, 60 FPS, and it's the 4 gigabyte model of the 380, so plenty of VRAM, that's not gonna be a concern there. And I have a R9 390 that's using the double dissipation uh, cooler, and it is cooling an R9 390 extremely well, so I'm gonna assume that it can cool an R9 380 even better. So, as far as a video card's concerned, for the money, this thing is great. The case, we have the Corsair 200R ATX mid-tower case. I think I used this thing in an earlier build as well, but it's still great for the money. Tons of positive reviews on this thing. It's a mid-tower case, which is plenty of room, gonna allow for plenty of airflow. I'd recommend putting a, uh, front, a fan in the front and a fan in the back so you get a push-pull configuration and it should just be able to sweep air over all your parts and keep everything nice and cool in there and as far as looks are concerned not bad at all it's a little bit plain but me personally I like that kind of look the more professional look not a ton of LEDs or any flashy bright colors but that's just what I like in a PC but if you like something else you know you can feel free to change the case it's really doesn't matter as far as performance goes just make sure it has plenty of airflow and you should be fine. So lastly, we have the power supply, which is probably, honestly, the best deal we have as far as components go in this whole system. It's a RAID Max 735 watt, 80 plus bronze certified semi-modular power supply for only $30. That's crazy, this thing's 80 plus bronze certified, so you know it's gonna be good, clean, efficient power. 735 watts is ridiculous for only $30. This is gonna allow for crossfire support in the future and overclocking headroom, it's gonna be great. And, you know, it's a decent looking power supply, it has a blue LED in there if you're into that. But, for the money, you can't beat a power supply like this. I'm not really sure about Raid Max as a brand, but the reviews were good, so I'm just gonna assume it's good. So I'll see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, be sure to comment, and be sure to subscribe if you're new, because I'm gonna have plenty more builds in the future. And, wish you all a good day.